In this video we will derive the Heisenberg equation of motion. Time evolution in quantum mechanics can be described by different formalisms, which are called dynamical pictures. For instance, if we start with a wave function psi zero and an operator a, the Schrödinger picture tells us that the wave function changes over time, but operators stay the same. Whereas the Heisenberg picture tells us that the wave function stays the same and the operator changes with time. The Schrödinger picture performs time evolution according to the time-dependent Schrödinger equation. So since the operator A in the Heisenberg picture depends on time, what is the corresponding equation that determines the time evolution? The answer is the Heisenberg equation of motion. In order to derive it, let us start with the total time derivative of AH. We can write this as the derivative of u dagger au. Applying the product rule gives us three terms. Usually the partial time derivative of a is zero since operators are not often explicitly time dependent. But in order to be as general as possible, we keep this term. Since the time evolution operator u is given in terms of the exponential function, we can easily perform this time derivative and write it in terms of the Hamiltonian of the system. Notice that the Hamiltonian and the time evolution operator commute, or in other words, their order is not important, which allows us to rearrange the equation like this. Here we can recognize the definition of the Heisenberg picture operator, and we can write this in terms of the commutator expression. Finally, some textbooks abbreviate the last term by the partial derivative dAh over dt. But this is rather confusing way of writing this, so we won't use it here. And there we have it. This is Heisenberg's equation of motion. As we previously mentioned, usually the last term is zero, so we can interpret this equation as follows. If the commutator of some operator with the Hamiltonian is zero, then its time derivative is also zero, which means that this operator is constant in time. And this means that its eigenvalues correspond to conserved quantities. For example, since the Hamiltonian obviously commutes with itself, one example of a conserved quantity is the energy of the system. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching!